Hello, can everybody hear me? Let's see, I'm gonna go to the chat here. Hi, Chloe. Yes, uh, we can hear you. So thanks a lot for joining in. I request you to please hold on for a few minutes. Sure, um, no problem. I'm going to get my screen set up. <laughs> no, sure, you can take your time. No issues on that. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for joining in, everyone. Uh, so just give us uh, five more minutes. So we'll uh, be starting it off in another five minutes. So I request you all to please hold on as we have some people who are joining in. Thanks a lot.
So, hey, hi, Chloe, uh, Shubham, the site. So, I guess we'll start off now and we'll let people join too. So, yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, very warm welcome to our second online meetup, which is on Azure Cognitive Services. So, uh, I'm Shubham, currently working as a program manager at Skillenza. So, you know, we at Skillenza have planned a series of four online meetups, which will help you to upskill your knowledge on AI on Azure. Uh, and so for today's session, we have uh, Chloe who works as a developer advocate at Microsoft. So yeah, like before we get started uh, with a speaker session, I'd like you to tell about Skillenza and the flow of today's webinar. So we are basically a challenge learning uh, peer learning platform. Uh, we use challenge models to help companies to discover relevant talent and hire better people. Uh, I'd request everyone to keep their mics on mute, please. Yeah. Uh, hi, Shubham. Just, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Uh, uh, we are not able to see the presentation that we are uh, sharing. Oh, all right, all right. You have one. Oh, okay, yeah. thanks. No so, yeah. So, I hope you can see the screen now. So, yeah, we are a platform for, you know, professionals and organizations where we host challenges. Like, for professional, we have hiring things going on. For the organization, we have hackathons and meetups. So yeah, uh, like when you come to our platform and when you participate in our events and stuff, you get jobs, internships, we have cash prizes, goodies, and obviously you really get an experience. So yeah, so like for today's session, uh, we have Chloe and I'd like to hand it over to you, Chloe, and you can start with your session. Sure, no problem. I am going to share my screen here, just a second. Let me go into presenter view. Let's see. All right, just a moment. Love doing uh, everything digitally now. There we go, play from the start. Let's see if I can do that. All right. Whoops, okay, let me try screen sharing one more time. And here we go. And uh, meanwhile, I thank all our viewers for joining in. Uh, so if at all any of you have any questions, please feel free to shoot them out. Uh, and uh, we have Chloe with us, uh, who's the uh, cloud advocate for Microsoft, and she'd be more than happy to address them for you guys. Over to you, Chloe. Yes, absolutely. All righty. I am just going to get, can you all see my slides? Yes, we can see the slides, please. Awesome, go. amazing. Okay, so today um, I'm gonna go into some really fun um, Azure Cognitive Services. And if you're totally new for, to Azure Cognitive Services, this is a talk for you. Um, this is going to tell you how to get started and hands-on with all of these um, wonderful products and tools. So a little bit about me um, before we get started. My name is Chloe. Um, I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft based in Oakland, California. So very early here, good morning. <laughs> um, and uh, this talk, um, as I said, today is gonna be about Azure Cognitive Services, but as far as what I love to do um, in tech, I really love creative solutions and examples in technology. Um, so specifically, I really enjoy crafting. I really enjoy robotics. I really enjoy making things. So all of my demos and examples tend to be a little bit more on the uh, creative side. So if you're looking for an intro to Azure Cognitive Services, that's great. If you're looking for a really, really deep technical dive into them, that's also great. Um, I, I'm sorry to inform you, however, that using Azure Cognitive Services is actually pretty lightweight and easy. <laughs> so um, we won't be going too uh, deep into the code today simply because it is just a couple lines of code um, to get started, but I'm very, very, very excited to show you all. So Cognitive Services, I'm assuming if you are in this talk, um, this is a relatively new concept for you and you're looking to get started with it. So you're probably thinking, okay, what is included in Azure Cognitive Services? So this would include APIs, SDKs, all the other services that we have um, that kind of help you complete these tasks that you need uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning to complete. So what's wonderful about this is you actually need no previous experience working with these tools at all. This is exactly why these tools exist, why we have them. It's very, very easy to add these features um, to your presentations. 
And let's see, I'm just gonna check real quick. I've got a couple different tabs open here. I'm hearing sounds. So if there's any questions or stuff, just, just speak up. So, oops, and I lost my tab here. Uh-oh, did I take myself out of presenter mode? Lovely, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try putting it up one more time. Sorry, everyone. I was trying to look at questions and then I, here we go, let me play from my current slide here and share it with y'all. Oops, find my Zoom tab. There we go. And I'm gonna share my screen. All right. There we go. We're back in action. You can see my slides? Yes. Yeah. Amazing, okay. Cool, I'm just going to move this down a little bit. Alrighty, so um, it's seriously just a couple lines of code. So it's very, very easy to implement. But before we kind of dive in to the different fun examples that you can do, I wanna do a little bit of review on some terms um, that we use with cognitive services, AI and ML at Microsoft. So I don't know about you, but um, specifically, when I think of machine learning, um, I think of a little robot reading a book <laughs> and studying because typically what we need to do when we're training a data model is to actually train our model. So have it understand and know what's going on. Um, so this may be kind of a new concept for you. So I wanna break it down. Uh, machine learning is typically bringing together data and an algorithm to solve a specific need. So training a particular data set um, or model, using a data set to train a model, I should say, um, of your custom choosing to say, oh, I want to identify you know, things that are red in this photo. Typically there may be an API that can do that for you, but let's say you want a very, very specific type of red. You could train a very specific model to find that particular shade. Whereas cognitive services are meant to require a general knowledge about your data without needing any experience with any machine learning or data science. So machine learning is typically going to be used um, by data scientists getting really, really specific, trying to dive in there. Whereas the cognitive services is, is just gonna need a general knowledge. So this cognitive services really covers a lot of things like image identification, text identification, things that maybe you don't want to have to train a model to identify every single letter in a receipt, for example, um, just out of the box solutions for that. So machine learning is definitely going to involve a lot more um, training, whereas cognitive services is a little bit more out of the box. And you don't need to train a robot to read a book, obviously. <laughs> All right, so what can you do with it? That is a great question. Um, Azure Cognitive Services and all our machine learning options typically fall under five main pillars. And here are those five things. And just so you get an idea, there's five of them, but there's a lot that are nested in here. And I'm going to go over all of them, but don't feel overwhelmed. We will we'll break down a couple of them and uh, dive into these specific ones. So these five ones are vision. So anything that you can visually see and detect um, information from, speech. So anything that's recorded or live speech that you then want um, to be analyzed and turned into text or, or even um, turned into a part of your project in that way. Language, so this is gonna be any sort of translation services, anything where you need to detect a particular language in a piece of text or even in audio. Um, web search, so this is everything Bing, <laughs> Bing all the things. So anything that's going to um, involve searching for images, searching for different things on the World Wide Web. And then of course, last but not least, decision. So this is going to be uh, things that help make decisions in your application. So this can be anything from a chat bot where you're trying to make a decision on what customer support agent to send the particular person to. Um, it could also be a decision on, you know, is this appropriate, is this not with our moderation API. So let's dive into some of the specific features in these five. And I'm gonna warn you, we have a lot of them, so it's gonna be very overwhelming. Um, but what I really want you to take away from today, from this talk, is more of an idea of what you're able to add to your applications and what capabilities are available to you within these. So we'll dive into some specific ones, but here's the grand overview of all of them. All right, so our vision APIs. Um, so this is one of the five, uh, of those five pillars we just went over. So one of them is computer vision. We have custom vision service, face, 
form recognizer, an ink recognizer, and video indexer. Um, oops, let me go back here. Uh, so let's dive into quickly what a couple of these are. Computer vision is going to be able to see and detect images. So example, if I have this pill case here, it can say, this is pills or a, a lovely LaCroix can, which will come back in later. It could identify that this is a can and a girl in the photo. Um, custom vision service is gonna be something custom that you um, train and determine what uh, you would like detected for that image. So I have a great example of this later in the presentation, but that could be the difference between, let's say that you have a bunch of mugs and this is a basic white mug that I had my coffee in this morning. But let's say you have, you run a website that has uh, all different kinds of collector mugs and you wanna identify all the specific artists. You could train a model to get very specific and in the weeds based into your custom needs. Um, face, one of my favorite ones that I'm gonna show one of my favorite examples of today. That's gonna to be anything about the face. So expressions, um, hair length, eye color, uh, age. <laughs> There's so, so many things that you can detect from a face alone. If they're wearing glasses, if they have facial hair, um, anything of that nature. Um, form recognizer, of course, is going to be anything from a form that we're extracting and we want to detect from that. Ink recognizer, this is in preview, I believe, but this is recognizing handwriting. Um, so taking a handwritten document and then being able to extract text from that. And then of course, video indexer. So this is indexing um, information from videos to then classify those videos to sort them however you would like. All right, next we have speech APIs. So this is going to include speech service, speech recognition API, um, so those two are basically um, going to be anything that has a audio uh, component to it. So anything from recognizing the specific speakers. We have a lovely demo of this in our docs where we have different US presidents and different lines from their speeches and you can detect which president it is by training a voice model. And then any sort of speech services which would be um, doing speech to text. Uh, there's some really, really great demos and examples out there, but recently um, I put out a blog post, which I can tweet out later, where we were able to rehearse talks just like this um, and memorize them by checking, uh, by listening to the audio recording and then cross-checking that what I said is what I wanted to have rehearsed. So there's a lot of great ways to do that. Obviously any customer support phone calls are a great way of doing that. Or even if you're taking notes and you don't want someone to have to take notes in the meeting, it can be done that way. Um, language APIs. So this is going to include language understanding, Lewis, which is a great tool that's used very often for chatbots. Um, I have some great uh, references that I can send there. Q&A maker. So um, this is a awesome, awesome, out of the box, very simple way of creating chatbots and a back and forth conversation where literally you upload a PDF of a FAQ form and it will make a chatbot for you. It's kind of magic would highly recommend doing it if you're looking to build a very simple chatbot. Um, text analytics, so detecting from text, uh, sentiment analysis, um, any sort of keywords that you're looking for in that text, and translator text. Um, so this is gonna be translating any sort of uh, um, translations that you need from other languages. And then of course, search APIs, all the things. Um, Bing all the things as I put in this slide. So this is going to use Bing for all of these things that I won't go into too much detail because I think we've all used a search engine before, but that's gonna include news, video, web, um, auto-suggest, custom search, entities, um, images, all sorts of different things that you can use with our search APIs that all utilize Bing. And just for the sake of not um, messing up my screen while I'm presenting again, if there's any, um, if you can't hear me or there's any important questions, definitely uh, voice them out, but I'll wait to for questions at the end. I see them popping up here. Um, and visual as well, um, and also local businesses. So this is gonna include anything that you would do in a basic um, search on the internet, just Bing it. Uh, and also spell check. So there's a lot of ways that we use Bing um, with our cognitive services here. And then decision APIs. So this is going to be anything that businesses are gonna use to help make decisions. So anomaly detector, um, making sure that there's nothing odd in a set of data, 
content moderator, which we'll go over. So as many, many, many of us are now switching to video formats, working from home, um, making sure instead of having a physical moderator, maybe in your forums or having to check everything, if you have some sort of social media site that you run or something where people can do public comments, being able to filter out anything that's hurtful or abusive, or um, maybe would show someone's personal information. Um, and then personalizer. So personalizing a um, website or a specific view of a website based on uh, a decision API that decides what the customer should see. All right, so that was a lot of information. We covered a lot of them, um, but now I'm going to go over some really fun examples that maybe will put this less in a marketing focus, this is what we do, and more of a fun way for you to think about these things. So you can start kind of getting your wheels turning on how you can add these to your applications. Um, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is one of my favorite projects that I've worked on while being at Microsoft, and this is Mario Kart Astrology. I'm sure we have some Mario Kart fans here. Um, but Mario Kart for me um, is a game that I've played a lot, especially as I've been home more. And a while back, um, I was playing Mario Kart with my boyfriend and I tweeted this last year, which it says, in my opinion, your chosen Mario Kart player says way more than your Zodiac sign does. If they choose Toad, you're like, okay, you're an introvert. And if you choose Bowser, you're like, okay, who hurt you? So this was just, oh, that was my Google. Okay, Google going off. Um, so I guess I can't say okay in this in this chat. So, uh, so this was just a joke that I put out there. And as you can see, the tweet went pretty viral. And just for fun, people started replying to the tweet and saying really funny things like, what does Yoshi say about me as a person? They said, oh, you are eager to please. And someone would say, what does Pink Gold Peach say about me? And I said, you have excellent taste and you don't put up with other people's crap. So you get the idea. I was kind of being playful and responding to these, what does green shy guys say? You're green and you're very shy. So what this turned into was um, I ended up building this site where I put in uh, my different answers that I put, but I thought, what if I used some data here? What if I actually trained some data and figured out what emotions and different things I could grab from Mario Kart images? So what ended up happening was first, I hit a little bit of a wall because as you can see, everybody in Mario Kart is a cartoon. So as soon as I put a cartoon image in there, it's not an actual face, it's a cartoon face. So I thought, oh no, this isn't gonna work. But lucky for me, people cosplay. And if you're unfamiliar, unfamiliar with cosplay, cosplay is when you dress up in a costume and um, there's a lot of conventions and, and, and things that people do to dress up as characters. So I started to use cosplay images to detect the emotions from my data. So using the face API, just to give you an idea of how this worked, um, I found Mario Kart player images, and then I ran those images through the Microsoft face API um, this is just a joke here, but throw a banana peel at, a, at an opponent that's part of the game. Maybe a little inside jokey if you've never played the game before. And then um, I wanted to write creative horoscopes inspired by or based on the emotion data that I was given from the Face API. And then um, from there, I hosted the horoscopes on a GitHub page for everybody to see. So just so you know kind of what this looks like, I truly, truly mean it's only a couple lines of code. Use the face API. It's pretty simple. So um, this, is, this is a basic, basic call that I'm doing here. So I'm using my subscription key from Azure, and I'm using my face API URL. Um, the image URL is just an image that I grabbed from the internet of a lovely cosplay image that I found. And um, I've got my headers here. And then as far as my parameters are concerned, I can choose um, what I want to return. So here I'm returning the face ID. And what the face ID is, is every face that you identify in an image using the face API will have a unique ID. So let's say I upload a bunch of images of myself and a bunch of images of my dad. My dad would have his own face ID and I would have my own face um, ID as well. Um, I'm also deciding what attributes to return. So I decided I wanted the age, head pose, smile, emotion, hair, makeup, accessories, and facial hair. Um, facial hair mainly because Mario, of course, has that lovely big mustache. Um, and also I wanted to know if there were any accessories like Princess Peach has a crown, is somebody wearing a hat? Um, and then my response, it's I'm just asking for the response to um, give me those parameters back in a JSON format and I can take a look at that. 
So here's the image, um, one of the images. So I had to find images of each Mario Kart player. Um, this one here, I was very iffy on if it was going to work because he's, of course, wearing a mask in this image and he's got a wig on. And when you're detecting, um, just much like when you can't detect uh, a lot of things from a cartoon image, or you can't, um, you need to make sure that you can at least see the person's expression and face. So this one ended up working um, because I think it must have detected his mask as glasses in this case. So lucky me. This is Lemmy Cook. Koopa, I believe, so a little bit of a lesser known Mario Kart character. But here is what was returned from this image. So you can see he's kind of, his face, his tongue sticking out. Um, he's got these this uh, mask on. And uh, so from this image, here's what it returned. And we'll dive into what these mean in a second, but um, we'll just walk through this real quick. So face rectangle, that is going to be the rectangle of the face. I know, very difficult, right? <laughs> so it's the four points um, of the face in which we're getting the data from. Um, so you can see in this example image here, I have two faces. So those would be two unique face IDs. So the first thing that we get is the face ID. Then we get the um, coordinates of the face rectangle. And we also get the face attributes. So for emotion, um, we for this image that we were looking at right here, the emotions that were returned were 0 0.001 contempt. Um, it looks like we got mostly happiness on this one. So 0 0.729 uh, happiness. And then age, we got 26. Now keep in mind with age, I always joke that um, Azure Cognitive Services is always complimenting me. I wear a lot of bright colors and I have very big eyes. So <laughs> sometimes Azure Cognitive Services identifies me as a child and I go, oh, is Azure flirting with me. Thank you so much, but I am 30 years old. Um, so uh, age is kind of sub subjective, especially, of course, when people are using cosplay because they do a lot of makeup that makes them look very uh, over overstates their, their features. So just be mindful of that. Um, makeup was really interesting. Um, we have false on eye makeup. Uh, but accessories, I should say, is very interesting because obviously here it detected that it had a 0.89 confidence in glasses. So that is the mask that it's it's detecting there. So 0.89 seems pretty right for that. Facial hair, we have 0.1 for sideburns. We have 0.1 for beard and 0.1 for mustache. Let's see. Let's look back at the image. Okay. I see a little bit of a, a shadow of the mustache there. Um, and then uh, for color, we have the different colors here, of course. And then it also has its confidence in the head pose, the yaw and the roll and pitch and a smile, of course. So the smile is 0.729. I would agree with that because it's kind of a silly face in this case. Um, and then... From here, basically what I did is I took this data and I made my own horoscopes that were just kind of a playful demo or it for this particular one. But for Bowser, for the information I got, it said that it was mostly angry because most, most pictures of Bowser's are going to be kind of like, you know, of course you have to train your data or use the correct images to train your data. So in this case, um, I needed to find images of Bowser where he was scowling because Bowser is usually scowling, whereas if there's a cosplayer smiling, that's going to give me very different emotions back. So here's an example of one that I wrote. Um, it says you've got some major anger issues and you're disgusted by your enemies, but it kind of makes you it kind of makes you happy to see them lose. Um, you can actually take a look at a whole blog post I wrote about this Mario Kart astrology on Dev2 that I can tweet out later. There's also um, a video where I go way more in depth on this, but this kind of gives you an idea and gets your wheels turning on how you could use this. Um, let's see. Next one I have here is Instant Moderator. So as I mentioned before, we've all made this transition now to communicating online. And uh, of course, with that comes a lot of trolls or people who maybe want to abuse the system on a public forum. And if you're running a website, you definitely want to make sure that everything you have on there is clean, moderated, looking good, except maybe if you're Reddit or a website that allows that. So uh, here is an example. So let's say that you have a customer support agent and you want to make sure that no abusive or harmful things are coming in through those um, support tickets that are coming in. So the really fun part of this is when you test this um, moderation, you get to kind of have a little fun with the cuss words. I'm of course not going to include them in here, but I'm sure you have an idea of what words you can use. We have many, many different languages and you select the language that you want to use. Um, in this case, I'm doing West US 2. So I'm doing English because I'm here on the West Coast um, of the United States. So Here's the example that I did. I put this support ticket is crap. Why don't you do your job? So of course we probably wouldn't want that going to out to our users or to our uh, customer support agents, or we'd want to filter them in some way. 
So by using my subscription key and using a post request here, um, I can really, really simply return the data here and be able to um, identify and categorize that in a specific way. Maybe there's a certain person on your team who is uh, tasked with um, responding to these types of tickets, or maybe you don't even want these tickets to come through at all. If they have particular words in them, you can use it in that way. So here is what I have returned here. So um, I have this poor ticket is crap. Of course, it identifies down here at the bottom that crap is the word that is not okay here. And then there's different levels um, of extremeness on um, how, how bad the word is. So you can definitely, it's bits of category one, two, or three. You can make decisions on that. Um, but it's a simple way to not have to uh, go through each individual word and ticket yourself. And it's right out of the box. All right, this is another fun one. Um, I'm working from home these days, but uh, it's very popular here in the Bay Area in Silicon Valley to drink LaCroix. It's, it's a sparkling water that's in every office here. So I have, um, when I get my groceries, I get a bunch of LaCroix and drink it here to make it feel like I'm working at the office. Um, so you can actually use custom vision service to detect all sorts of objects. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, if I posted a picture of me, it would probably say young girl, <laughs> but there's all sorts of things. I'm looking at things on my desk here. So um, I have this toy from Alien, so it might identify toy, or maybe it would identify alien, depending on how big I had it in the image. <laughs> um, if you had glasses, it could identify glasses. And of course, these are all going to be pre-trained data models. Um, now, in my case, let's say that I wanted to build an application that would detect Oops, let me go back here, detect how many cans are on my desk. So I can take a photo of that and it can say, okay, Chloe, you have these, we identified these four things in your image and we think these are four cans. Well, that's great, but what if I wanna get more custom with it? So we have an Azure Cognitive Service that can definitely identify um, right out of the box that these are cans, but if you use our custom vision services, you can actually get really, really specific here. Um, so I'll be coming out with a blog post about this uh, probably next week after build on how you could actually train your data model um, on the specific flavors here. So let's say I not only want to identify how many cans are on my desk in the image, but I also want to identify what flavors I'm using. So this can be used for um, user research. This can be used for any sort of image identification that you're getting in from customers. Um, you can detect all sorts of things. So if you had an apple, banana, and an orange, it could detect those. But you can train and customize your own models. So of course, this is going to take a little bit more time, um, but it won't be a right out of the box feature, but you would train your model. Um, you would go through all of the sets of different flavors that you have and say, okay, this thumbs up, this is an orange, this is a lemon, this is a lime. Um, and then based on the data that you upload to Azure Custom Vision Service, you'll then get that API endpoint to be able to cross check based on your specific needs. Maybe you absolutely hate cran raspberry <laughs> you don't anytime you have that you want to you want to throw back something that says like don't get this flavor anymore um you can get very very specific with these and really um contour it to your needs um and then we have identifying text and images. So um, this is a pretty common use case. Um, typically, if we're using any sort of PDF upload or um, a very, very common use case, as I have here, is this receipt. So this receipt here is from Contoso on 123 Main Street in Redmond, Washington. And it looks like the person uh, purchased a Surface Pro, and it has all the details there. It has the price has the subtotal and it also even has the date, the time. Um, it looks like this 123456 number is probably the purchase order number um, and then the sales associate as well. So there's a lot of different data that we may wanna pull from this. So right out of the box, um, Microsoft Cognitive Services has a receipt template that you can use. So there's no need to do any custom training on a very common item like a receipt or perhaps a form. We have a form recognizer as I mentioned before as well. Um, but uh, so this is a right out of the box solution, but let's say, and again, I'm gonna use a kind of quirky fun example to help get your, your gears turning here. Let's say that you have all your Pokemon cards and you want to identify all of the different strengths and weaknesses and power abilities and naming and weight and length and everything of the Pokemon. Obviously, 
we don't have that right out of the box. So this is something that you would want to train here. But what I, I use the Pokemon card as an example here, because typically when we are using things beyond the common receipt, the common form, the common, you know, kind of output that we get, um, we want to be able to train these custom models. So this would be very similar to the last example that I shared with the sparkling water. You would basically go in and help um, use the custom model to be able to train uh, where on these items and what, uh, where on these items, the text and images that you want detected from it, um, you would want you would want to return. And then um, by uploading that, uh, by doing that training model and then adding that to your Azure service, you can then be able to query that specifically. So there's a lot of, lot of different, uh, of course, using a custom model is going to be a lot more detailed and a lot more um, effort on your part, but you can really get specific with these. You can really get down to the nitty gritty of, um, and you can even combine these as well. So for example, um, you could use identifying text and images in this case, and then use image detection as well. So let's see, I'm going to think of a use case off of the top of my head. Let's say that you have baseball player card. So let's pretend that it isn't a Pokemon in this case. Let's say it's a, a human. Um, and you could actually detect the emotion from that human. You could actually detect um, all of their different stats. So if it was a baseball stat, you could detect all the numbers from there. You could then write your own algorithm to, to determine you know, what their stats are going to be for the next year or the year after that. So you can get very specific with these. Um, really great examples that I love to share are audience reactions. So of course, you do have to get permission if you're taking images images or photos of, photo of folks um, and make sure that you, you have those permissions to take those images, but you could have an audience and detect what emotions they're, uh, they are putting out from a talk that you're giving. Um, a lot of times this will be used to um, just kind of format, to, to take the information and then format in any way you want to then be able to analyze those emotions or analyze that text how you will. All right, so how do you get started? Great question. <laughs> There's a lot of resources online. Um, these are four really excellent modules that will walk you through step by step how to add these to your applications. The main reason that I didn't go over the specifics of how to add these um, is it simply is just creating a resource in Azure. Um, and then from there, uh, deciding what region you would like, and then the specific needs of that resource. So once you have that resource up and running, right out of the box, you can actually go to any of these four modules and it'll tell you um, how to get started, how to find that um, API endpoint, how to get your token to basically allow you to do these things. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to go back here. With some of these, um, you can get very, very specific. So with the sparkling water one, for example, you can definitely dive in there. But for things like the face API, this is right out of the box. I didn't have to create or write or train any of this to say, this is brown, this is blue, this is pink or yellow or red. This is a very, very simple, simple way that you can automatically upload an image in probably, it, it took me about five minutes today to just get mine up and running and working. Um, this is going to be a very out of the box solution. So you can spend more time working on the specifics of your application and the specifics of your code and not have to, first of all, take an a, uh, AI or ML class <laughs> and train all your data, this is going to be a very simple solution for that. So there really is a a, a size, uh, it's not a one size fits all solution, but there really is kind of a format for everything, a template for everything. And then of course, if you do want to get really specific with your needs, if maybe it's not a receipt or maybe your receipts look very strange compared to most receipts, maybe it's in a really long format or it spits out a, um, uh, you know, those CVS receipts that are really, really long. Um, you can get in the weeds here and get very, very specific. Um, and then I also wanted to share before I get, I figure we have some questions here, maybe on specifics, um, that next week is build. And actually I will be sharing, um, I don't have her in here with me right now, but I have a little robot named Misty that my friend and I will be using um, some Azure Cognitive Services with. 
So you can definitely check that out. Um, there's all sorts of ways to integrate these into your applications. Um, with Misty, for example, she's a little robot. We can have her um, look at a person, detect their emotions, and then be able to respond with facially with sadness or happiness or cheer them up. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can use this and you can get really creative with them. Um, personally, I think that the real value in Azure Cognitive Services is being able to not only detect text and detect language and do all these things on the back end, but doing these specific things with your users, detecting how they're feeling, um, making custom websites, uh, custom versions of your website show up based on the customer data. This is a lot of training that typically in the past requires a lot of data to put in and a lot of custom um, data models here, but this is a very, very simple way to be able to make these custom experiences, um, even with language, if you want to make sure that the language is detected and put on there. Um, if maybe there's a form input that you want to make sure, oh, interesting, they're inputting Spanish into here, then you can um, tailor it in that way. So those are some of my top examples here. I've also put a link here for build, which is next week. I'll specifically be um, with that robot in the student zone, but the student zone is open to everyone. So I encourage even if you're you don't consider yourself a student you can be a lifelong learning student um, but yeah now now that I've kind of shown some of these slides I also have a couple examples on my desktop here I am going to look at questions if I can find where the questions are let's see Ooh, sorry I'm usually a teams girl so I'm I'm used to the <laughs> the team situation but if some oh here we go here's the chat Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any specific questions? I see Python code. Yes, that was Python code in there. It says, how do you find the hidden layer in Vision app? Cognitive services, how much accuracy does the Vision API detection for self-learn of, yeah, for self-driving cars? So this is a great question. You can definitely, definitely use it for that use case. Um, I believe one of the use cases that we have on our cognitive services page uh, does deal with training. So that would be a custom um, one in that case. So you can absolutely train images to say like, hey, you're veering off the road, you're, you're going a little bit to the left or right. That would really be one, especially from a safety perspective that you would wanna definitely use a custom model for, but absolutely. Um, another use case that I can, off the top of my head, thinking of cars, um, I know that Uber uses facial recognition to make sure um, from a security perspective that uh, drivers are not sharing accounts. So um, they'll oftentimes have something that pops up and says, hey, can you please take a picture to confirm that you are this person? And then by taking a photo, almost similar to you know unlocking your phone with facial recognition, it can then tell you, yes, this is this person, or it can alert like, oh, this this is not the person who's supposed to be driving and alert them that, that there may be a, a safety or security issue there. Um, so how to find a hidden layer in Vision API. Okay, so yeah, it's not so much, um, uh, let's see, da -da. can divide vision into pixels in Vision API in case not identify as vision, detect wrongly, develop autonomous cars, and able to detect the different, okay, I'm not sure if I totally understand that one, but is there any other specific questions? I also have a couple other um, examples that I could share. Um, ooh, let's see. Can we build something like English Grammar Checker where the API checks and suggests mistakes uh, in a better way of writing a sentence using cognitive services? Absolutely. I was actually um, just talking about this with some friends. So uh, here um, in, in the United States, the Oxford comma is always a commonly uh, a commonly discussed thing in sort of the writing world. So an Oxford comma is a comma it's on the, if you're making a list, it's the comma before the final and. So you do this thing, this thing, this thing, and this thing. Um, so you could totally train a, a set to say, hey, in a sentence, detect if there's a comma after the and here. Um, English grammar checker for sure. Uh, it would, um, there is a spell check feature as well that comes with um, Bing, uh, Bing search, I believe. So that could be a right out of the box solution for you, but you could get very specific with it as well. Um, how does the language API detect if a PDF has multilingual language? Yeah, so that would be pretty similar to the Mario Kart example. So um, much like we got that JSON returned to us that had the emotion, the you know, uh, you know, 
accessories, facial hair, all those things. When you're doing language detection, um, you can specify the different languages in there. So um, you can detect what language, so without having to put the specific ones, but also um, it's very, very easy to be able to detect like, oh, there's German and French and English and all these different uh, Japanese. It'll be able to recognize those um, specific characters within one. So absolutely, it would just be something you would turn on and off. Um, let's see. Yeah, kind of similar to Grammarly. Um, I would say you could get a little bit more um, as far as if there's a specific thing that you're trying to correct, you could definitely dive in there and do your own customizations. But yeah, you could definitely do that. Um, any use case with satellite image with vision API to detect road traffic and compare to previous data? Yeah, so that would be something you would definitely want to use a training model for, like a custom, a custom one. But that's absolutely something you can do. Um, recently, I'm trying to think of a project that I've done. I've done some image um, image classification with NASA satellite images. So comparing, um, you can actually using the NASA API, which is open and free to use, you can get a return, uh, you can get an image of the earth. Um, and it's been really interesting lately, especially with less people driving and on the road and be able to see what the earth looks like in comparison to the last couple of days. So you can use those images and say, hey, like use this image has more clouds and this one has less clouds and then from there be able to detect you know what anomalies are in there the anomaly detector would be would be really um good use case for that um for ai or ai 100 any preparation advice Ooh, that's a great question i would say um any of the microsoft learn modules and tutorials that is my go-to for everything so those links that i shared which i can definitely put up again. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Sorry, y'all. I'm going to come out of full screen mode here. Um, yeah, any of those links that I provided um, will take you to Microsoft Learn. And from there, um, I would say search any of the AI um, Learn modules, and they will help set you up from there. A lot of it is kind of taken uh, directly from that. And I can drop those links in the chat as well. I'll actually do that right now. So everybody has it. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I would say the best way to prepare is to look at our, I'm going to put it in here for everyone. Here's all those links. So aka.ms slash instant mod, aka.ms slash image detects, aka.ms slash custom viz one. So they're all in the chat right now. Um, and I'll make sure to tweet those later as well. Um, from there, and I, I can actually show y'all what Microsoft Learn looks like. Here we go, Microsoft Learn. I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, let's see, I'm gonna share here. Um, so this is a really, if you're looking to, let's see, you guys can see my browser here, I hope. Okay, say, say something if you can. <laughs> So um, Microsoft Learn is a really, really great resource for this. And what I would do is go to this Browse All Paths area. Let's see what the chat says. Perfect. Um, so if you go into this chat area here, or sorry, chat area. If you go into the search here, you can actually look at all of our different AI ML stuff. So if you type in AI, it's going to return all of these. I would say you would be in very, very good shape um, reviewing any if not all of these, um, specifically with cognitive services, uh, you can just type in here. This is, I kind of view this as a training ground for a lot of those. Oops, I can spell here, cognitive, there we go. Whoop. Cognitive, there we go. Cognitive, there we go. So any of these are a really, really great starting point for that and a really great review as well, even if you're just kind of thinking like what are these terms and what are the five different um, elements of that, which I'm sure will be in, be in AI 100, but these are a great starting point. Um, what I also really like about it is there's sort of like a point system for doing them so you can kind of feel some accomplishment as you complete them, <laughs> as you can see from the little XP up here, but these are great and they'll walk you through step-by-step step how to do all these things so you can really be in good shape for when you do those. Um, let's see. Amazing. Cool. I'm glad you guys could see that. Otherwise, we'd be just talking into the void. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very, very easy to get started with these. As I mentioned before, um, 
And I can actually show you the portal right now while we have a little bit of time. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go back to this. Uh, I'm gonna share the Azure portal with y'all so you can get kind of a peek at what that looks like. Let me move this into a new tab. And here we go, okay. So Azure portal. So if you go to, oops, let me share. Let me actually share my screen. There we go. And there we go. Okay. So if you go to um, azure.microsoft.com, you can actually go to the portal here. And I'm a very visual person. So I do do a lot of things in my terminal, but especially um, sometimes when I'm bringing up resources or doing some of these things, I just go directly into the portal. And if you are looking to create any of the things that we're doing today, and those links that I shared with you, um, we'll show you step by step how to do that. You'd basically just create a resource in here. So um, let me go back and show you that real quick, but I'm in the portal. I can go to create a resource and the Azure Marketplace has all of this stuff right out of the box. So you can actually just click on AI machine learning. Um, a lot of the ones that we talked about today, so the face API, computer vision, Bing search, text analytics, these all live in here. Um, there's also quick starts and tutorials, but for example, let's say that you wanted to do the same thing that I did, the Mario Kart face kind of thing. Um, you could just go in here, click on face, and it will tell you everything that you need to do to do this. So, you know, I would type in unique name here. I'd select my subscription. I select where I want it, um, the pricing tier and the resource group. Typically you're gonna wanna create a new resource group for each one that you do. And once this is up, it's in the cloud, you get that subscription key and you are good to go. It is very, very, very simple and lightweight. So the cloud is really your friend in this, in this case. Um, it's pretty much as simple as creating a resource and truly it, it Oftentimes when I'm using a lot of these cognitive services, I'm shocked um, at how easy they are to, to just get up and running with. Um, I also have a video coming out soon where we just show this whole uh, process. Resource group, that's a great question. I can show you one of my resource groups. So let's go back to here. So a resource group is gonna be where all your resources live for your particular project. So I can show you right now, um, if anybody's playing Animal Crossing, I'm building a Animal Crossing turnip timer, which is a very simple Azure function. So here's what the function itself looks like. But of course, um, with any project, you're gonna have resources that go along with that. So resources are gonna include anything from a database. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go to my actual resource groups. You can see it. So I've got the Azure function here, but I also have my resource group. And the resource group is gonna include all of the different things that my application needs. So in this case, oops, I don't know why this is, let me make my screen a little bigger here so I can go through, great. So this is gonna include my database, my Azure storage account, um, the function, the Azure function itself. So an Azure function is a lot like a Lambda function. Um, I have my Cosmos DB account here, my storage account, my app service plan. So all of those resources that I need to live within a resource group. So the resources are really just kind of, you can almost think it like containers in a way, the different elements that I need to have this app up and running so I can host it, have the database, have everything in one place here. Um, let's see, what other questions do I have here? Um, is there any sequence to follow for those courses? Yeah, um, I would say it's really kind of a choose your own adventure thing. Personally, I go through a lot of these courses kind of as I need them, but if I were to suggest for any sort of certification, um, let's see. I know that there is a module. So there's different, um, there's learn modules and there's kind of like groups of things that you can do. So I would just jump right in there and search um, AIML and there's probably an entire track that you can do that will touch a lot of these ones. So I don't necessarily have an order to suggest but there are a lot of groupings of those in the learn um, the learn modules. Uh, or maybe I'm getting the term wrong. There's There's, Oh, learning paths and there's learning modules within the paths. So select a path that makes sense to you. So you can touch a bunch of different one of, ones of those and then you can go into there. Um, let's see, are these services free? Great question. So um, there are a lot of free services that we offer. Um, I know in particular, if you are a student, this is gonna be free. If you have a .edu address, um, there are a lot of free tiers within Azure. Of course, once you get into more of the heavier, um, especially like resource management, if you're you know, having a lot of different images or databases, there's a different pricing plans for those, but there are um, 
there are a lot of free trials that we have for getting started. So definitely if you, especially if you use those aka.ms links that I shared, um, just testing them out and under, uh, just right out of the box, those are going to be totally free to try and play around with. And um, you won't end up having to pay very much to, if anything, to get started with those. Um, let's see. All right. We're at 8.25. I did a lot of talking. <laughs> so if there's maybe one or two more questions, we can go over them. But otherwise, if you want to, um, if you want any specifics or maybe you have a particular project that you need help with, um, my Twitter handle was on all the slides, um, but it's just my name um, at Chloe Condon, C-H-L-O-E. I'll put it in here. I'll put a link to my Twitter in here so you guys can contact me. Um, but yeah, if there's any you know specific issues or maybe use cases that you're looking to get started with, I can definitely connect you in the right direction. Here is... There we go. And also, as I mentioned before, and I included this link before, but I will drop it here again. Um, we, of course, have the student zone at Build, which is more student focused. But if you really, really want to get specific and get a lot more um, in the details and see a bunch of really great use cases, Microsoft Build is next week. 24 hours for every different time zone. There's a lot of really, really awesome AI and ML stuff um, coming out of there. So if there's any specific cognitive services that you want to dive deeper into, definitely register and find those and add them to your schedule now. What's really great about Microsoft Build being digital this year is none of the rooms can get full, so you can go to all of them. <laughs> Um, and I believe we'll have all the videos available afterwards. So you can check them out. So um, I believe Seth Juarez is doing some really cool um, AI ML stuff. We have a bunch of amazing, amazing engineers here who are working on really cool cognitive services projects. So definitely um, sign up for those sessions at Build because they're going to be a, a, a lot of deep dives going on there. Yes, I'm excited for Build as well. Um, I, I'm Especially, I wish I had my robot in here to show y'all, but there's going to be some really fun um, image and facial recognition that we're doing with that. Yay. Yes, Build 2020. I keep forgetting that it's 2020 as well. I keep saying 2019 also. <laughs> so, um, all right. So if there's no other questions, I think that's yeah. about it for me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank, thanks a lot, Louis, for all those amazing insights. And I'm really sure our viewers out there find it very informative. So now we'll quickly move on to our team, you know, who have built the project at the hackathon and they'll be demonstrating about it. All right. Uh, so Shitaja, can you just uh, start sharing your screen and take it over? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks, everyone. So basically for all our viewers out there and for your information reference as well, Floyd. So we recently hosted one of the uh, biggest online hackathons in India. And uh, so this is one of the teams uh, who performed really good and uh, they built a project around uh, uh, AI itself. And uh, so we have them from our community and just to, you know, uh, address our viewers on what, what exactly their project was all about and to give more insights. So over to you, Shitija and also. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. So hi, everyone. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, oh. Are we audible? Yeah. So just a bit. Yeah, you guys can go ahead. Yeah. We can uh, hear you. You guys can uh, just take maybe 10 minutes or so just to give a complete overview of the project. Okay. Uh, yes, so I'll begin with. Uh, my name is Shitija, and I recently graduated from IIT Kharagpur in 2019. Itself. So we participated in Mishmash uh, Hackathon in the month of March. And uh, yeah, I have my teammate, teammate Utsa with me. Uh, Utsa, you can introduce yourself. Hello. Hi, everyone. So we participated in this hackathon. And the problem statement was given by Unilever. Uh, it was about uh, delivery supply chain. 
uh, it was a very special problem where large companies have their lines uh, spanning across countries from uh, cities to towns and villages as well so for a company to manage its supply chain hello yes. Yeah, so maybe you could just try switching off your video. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, is it better now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it's a general supply chain problem where uh, there are mainly two type of problem statements that we face. The first one is in which you have a centralized distribution point and you have deliveries across a city. Uh, Amazon will be a very good example of this. They have a centralized warehouses where vehicles come and deliver to different people. While the second problem statement can be of a distributed pickup and delivery. Uh, you can have vehicles picking up at different points and then delivering it to different people. Uh, so what we tackled was both of the problems here in the solution. Uh, of course, picking up at different points and delivering it to other people also solves the problem of rebalancing of stocks across different uh, shops. So yes, coming to the vehicle routing problem. Uh, so all of these problems are covered under graph theory. Uh, you probably know what graph theory is. So uh, for vehicle routing problems, there are different types of them. Uh, so we have uh, N vehicles, which are like uh, mapped to M nodes. And uh, for uh, the capacitive vehicle routing problem, there's a restriction on the capacity of the vehicle. For example, a particular type of vehicle, suppose you take an example of a truck, which has a limited amount of capacity as compared to uh, the capacity of a smaller truck or a tempo. Then we have a vehicle uh, routing problem with time windows where uh, we have a restriction on the time windows of the uh, delivery and pickup. Like if, if I want, like I'm a, uh, I'm a bachelor, so I would rather want my uh, deliveries to happen in non-office hours in my home. So I, I can uh, impose such type of restrictions on uh, vehicle routing problem with time windows. And then we have a static routing, uh, static vehicle routing problem, and then we also have dynamic uh, vehicle routing problem. So um, end of the day, what matters is basically going from one node to different node on a graph. And while this distance can be a cost or a time or speed, whatever a company prefers to define as a cost of traveling. Yes. Uh, uh, coming to the architecture diagram. Uh, uh, so we have. Uh, this is an ideal example of a event-driven serverless architecture. Uh, you can please go ahead and ask questions if you want. Uh, basically, my users will be vehicles, uh, drivers, or salesmen will be on the ground, and shopkeepers shopkeepers of, of different shops which will place orders if they need stocks or uh, they might not even place orders because at times these delivery networks are made, made to sell things. And uh, we used serverless Azure functions uh, as uh, with an API to enter data into a known SQL DB. In this case, a Cosmos DB. Uh, why we chose Cosmos DB? Because it's a known SQL DB which supports multiple primary keys and querying on those keys. Once a driver enters his uh, availability in the morning or a seller gives uh, an order, all the data is then stored into a NoSQL DB, which is then given to a stateless function, which creates this travel, uh, traveling salesman problem. Uh, so every traveling salesman problem has two parts, uh, supply and demand. Supplies are basically uh, drivers who are ready with their vehicles at different locations, give, sharing their locations, and uh, demand will be from shopkeepers. So once you have all of these, you just give a cluster, this problem statement. So I'll 
explain what this cluster is here. Basically, any uh, such problems has three components to it. The first one is a, a map API. Uh, map APIs, uh, there are various map APIs, of course. What we really need is a basically a distance matrix provider API. And <clears throat> we had used OSRM maps here because we can host it on our own uh, server. All of these things are inside Docker and they are maintained as a Kubernetes cluster or Azure container, container services. Once you have all the data, you can have a very uh, good UI to, to visualize whatever the problem was solved or what was the best route uh, which was given to a driver. Of course, uh, every solution will then be uh, stored in a database of uh, document DB. And then you have a machine learning model which sits and optimize everything. It says, whether my delivery guy is right for this kind of a product because at times what happens is that these folks go to shops and they say, why don't you try this new product? Because uh, end of the day, uh, salesman is what uh, the personality of a salesman highly uh, affects the sales. So you have kind of two segments here where one segment is of uh, sellers and second clustering based segment of drivers. So then you have a simple algorithm, machine learning algorithm to tell, you, tell which mapping works the best for a particular product. And then that mapping can be given to the DP. So it's a complete tech stack that we have used. Uh, and then there's, there's always alternate text that could, we could have been using. Um, yes, so major components of the tech stack are uh, distance matrix API, which we have used OSRM for now, and the alternate can be the Bing Maps uh, distance matrix API, and also by Google Maps. And then uh, the visualization, we have used OSRM uh, project team, and uh, also, you could, uh, you could, of course, use other visualization services such as Mapbox, or Streamlight, or Google Maps, or Power BI. Then uh, for deployment, we had uh, uh, Hello, Shitya. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. 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 May, may you know like what uh, machine learning models you used for optimization? Uh, first of all, it's a very good uh, uh, use case. Uh, thanks for solving it. I would like to know about what machine learning models you used. Uh, so it was a deep tech problem statement. It was not of a machine learning problem statement. Mm -hmm. uh, deep tech is different than machine learning. Deep tech is where you solve problems uh, using a complete tech stack uh, to start with. No, uh, for machine learning model, oh, no, no, that's right. For optimization, you, you, did you use any of Azure's uh, cloud service, machine learning ML cloud services, or any deep learning services? So uh, machine learning was not a part of the problem statement. It was more of a supply. Okay. 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 So majorly, we have solved the vehicle routing problem statement, uh, and that was only the scope of the hackathon. Okay. The problem statement. Okay. Thank you. I guess. Do we have any more questions now? Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Utsa and Shitaja, for your presentation. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for joining. And like we mentioned, you know, this is a series of webinar. And in the next next webinar, we'll be covering on how to build conversational bots using Azure Bot Framework. And so before we wind up, you know, I would just uh, ask everyone to you know uh, open their cameras and we can take a picture so that we can you know tweet around it. <laughs> So yeah, uh, like like Shubha mentioned, uh, thanks a lot everyone for joining in and uh, let's just have a quick picture. I mean, uh, we know that maybe you're not all prepared for it, but uh, just uh, those of you who can switch on your cam, we can just, you know, uh, take a quick picture and upload.
This is just to ensure that since we are all back at home, so just to make sure that we are seeing yeah. different faces. You know? So that's the reason we just wanted to have the, this uh, one photograph. Thanks a lot uh, for the section. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Maybe uh, Shubham, you can click a picture. Yeah, but then I see still a lot of people they haven't switched on. It's fine, I mean. It's all. Well, I have to switch on my lights. You know, because I have this uh, cool setup, you know, just for taking pictures for webinar. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, Chloe, for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you all for this Thanks. good section. Thanks a lot. I will learn a lot. Yeah. Thanks for your effort and time, guys. Thanks, well, Thanks, guys. Guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you.